Okay. As always, we began at the customary hedge and have taken the fateful introductory left. Speaking of introductions, welcome to Ride Along with Run Man. I'm your host, Run Man. This ought to be episode number 45, and we're going to just start off with three things. The first thing is that we are going to begin increasing our pace here. As soon as I get my little phone wire situifimithinificated, which I have. So, let us begin. Okay. Now that we're running, we have some orders of business today, don't we? The first one is this. I'm going to try. I'm not going to hold myself to this, but let's put a soft intention out there to make this one another household-friendly one. I have done two, I think, at this point. And we're starting to creep up on episode 50. It'd be nice if even a tenth of these episodes were available to those with the sensitive ears or those with different morals when it comes to, to, to swearing and that kind of thing than I usually hold myself. I'm not going to judge my perspective or anybody else's perspective. I work the way that I work, and I like the way that I work, but I'm willing to be flexible, you know? <clears throat> it's a good exercise in thinking a slightly different way to consider different audiences. So I'm going to use it for the constructive possibilities that are offered. <clears throat> so we'll see. Don't worry, plenty of fart jokes coming up, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe not, I don't know. We'll see. Here's, what, here's, the, here's the things that are certain. Concrete, plants, cityscape, sky, and the sun way up there, looking down at us, beaming down like he's proud of himself, as he should be. But way down beneath, in relation, at least looking at things from my perspective, here we are, together, on these roads, beneath this sky, making this thing happen. This thing that we've introduced already. So that was one order of business that I wanted to get right there out of the way, just to set my clear and focused, undivided attention on. And intention. So we'll see how we hold to that. We're also going to see what kind of a run this ends up being. It could be a long run, could be a short one. So I guess that classifies this one as what is probably the most popular type of run at this point in time. That being a maybe run. 20 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes, who knows? All that we know is that we've started. I would love for this light to turn green any old time, any old way. I'm not in charge of the governance of the disposition of the lights of the roadways of our great nation. However, when the light goes green, I can take advantage. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm not even going to leave this next little maneuver up to that. We're going to go slightly behind the line. We're going to go this way. Are we crossing a parking lot or jaywalking? That's a now that's a that's a gray area sometimes. So you see, we got to pick our way around the details on this on this here conversation we're having, and we're doing it in live action the way it's supposed to be done, where lessons can be lived, which is the warrior's way. One learns to be flexible, right? We take what we can. So. We just talked about a whole bunch of cool things. There's a whole bunch of other cool things coming right up. Now you'll notice I'm possibly not my effervescent usual self. I'm not bombastic. I'm not fizzing or crackling with electricity. And mind you, that's all in here. But what I'm currently expressing falls under a different umbrella slightly. And I knew that it was going to be this way right when I made the decision to do this. Which, as is typical, was basically a snap decision. Although this time, it wasn't a excited yes snap decision. It was more like a, eh. I guess I understand how artists feel now. When they've got stuff to do, they don't have the proper time set aside to get anything done at the right time. And they find themselves sort of pigeonholed into an unusual bracket. It is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And, well, uh, one thirty-five ish kind of between shifts in my numbers coming in delivery occupation situation. So, 
Here I am between worlds. You know what I decided to do? I decided to make myself some breakfast. That was like two hours ago. Ooh. And you know what happened when I made breakfast, which I thought would be productive, since I wasn't going to be productive in monetary ways during the lunchtime shift, when I could have been, but happened to have got off to a late start. Well, I decided I was going to make myself some breakfast and enjoy it. So I did. Made myself some buttered toast, threw some eggs on it, a little sauerkraut, got a little cheddar in the mix. That was pretty solid, a very salty affair. I didn't have time to get to my hot sauces. You know why? Because my hot sauces are located in my room, which is not the kitchen. In the kitchen, because we have removed the pipes of the sink in order to prevent further clogging, which is inevitable and constant, we opted to put a giant pot under the sink into which the water flows, into which, onto which, we lay our attention. And through the attention, we monitor the situation as we wash dishes, as we pour things and spill things in the sink, all the usual stuff. Well, it came my turn during the making of breakfast, before a reaching of the hot sauces, just as I was finishing things. Just so happened that I flooded that pot because I took it upon myself to clean a pot that had been in the sink for a few days. I decided to apply steel wool when soap and brillo were not taxing and weathering the calcium deposits or possible rice imprints off. Not exactly sure what was there. I did know that I partially contributed to the accruing of all of that substrate and somebody had set it aside to soak it. I thought, you know, it would be nice to just take that and fix it. Finish this thing since I had a hand in making that thing dirty. I'm gonna have a hand in taking it out. So I did. Lo and behold, it lost track of the water level because I had dumped the pot right there, right when I began. So I thought I have a leisurely threshold for lack of high resolution observation. So this anecdote, by the way, for the kids, an anecdote is a story, it's a funny thing that happened the other day, it's that kind of thing. Anecdote, you tell somebody about something that happened. Kind of like a story, like a little story. Some anecdotes are funny. Some anecdotes are sad. This one's a mixture of both. But here I was, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, having gotten my beauty sleep. I thought, okay, well, it's my turn to flood the kitchen. Everyone else in the house has done it. And I had been so careful, but not this time. So, okay, fair enough. I had just folded and done laundry on a great deal of towels. So I knew where they were and I knew what to do with them. Dried up the floor, sopped things up, got under the sink, used the little pot that I had been cleaning to dip into the big pot overflowing get a little bit of water out of there, which then allowed me to take the big pot and get it outside and pour it out. By the way, before I continue, I want to complete that thought on the anecdote word. It's a really good word. I want to do it proper justice today. So uh, what we're going to do is the classic thing on these household friendly episodes. We're going to spell it. <laughs> it's going to be a little trickier than usual because I don't use the number, sorry, I don't use the word anecdote too often. So let's do it. From memory, anecdote, A-N-E-C-D-O-T-E, -E. anecdote, eh. <laughs> so there we are, now we're all here together. Anywho, midway through this anecdote, here I am properly drying off the kitchen, properly aerating and sopping under the sink. There I am, loading up some more laundry with the towels that I had just done, but no biggie. It was my turn. You know, I just realized I forgot to throw everything in the dryer. Oh well, when I get back, I will figure that out. So I thought to myself, okay, well this puts me squarely between shifts. As I finished my breakfast, throughout all this, without any hot sauces, having not made it to my room, as I said, as I finished that breakfast, cleaned off the plate carefully, 
noticing where the water was going and what it was doing in the containers in which it was flowing, <laughs> how quickly we learn that we learn slowly and we adjust. Now that's the, that's the big cosmic joke of the whole situation. Anyway, I got my way through it. And lo and behold, at the end, I've got some motivation. I had some podcasts going. Some people that I like to listen to. Uh, shout out to the Brothers of the Serpent. They're fun people. Um, now that I think about it, they don't curse or get too lewd when it comes to their programming. So they're probably relatively household friendly, depending on your morals and your philosophy and your... What's the word of it? What's the word? Your persuasion, your religion, because they do delve heavily into both of those things. All of those things. But they're also just a couple of brothers in a studio in Texas, working at a winery, making music, and talking about ancient history and the mysteries of ancient history. And it's a good time. Anyway, shout out to Brothers of the Serpent. That's a long title. And it seems heavy, so I like to call them the Snake Bros. They call themselves the Snake Bros quite often. They're good people. They are. T- there's two of them. There's actually more than two of them. There's the brothers Russ and Kyle. Then they have a friend called Watcher who moderates for them. And they have some other folks as well they bring around who are also Snake Bros. And I want to say that when we listen, we're also honorary Snake Bros and Sisses. Isn't that nice? I think so. I treat that sort of honorary beholdens to to these groups the same way that I feel about the Game Grumps. If you listen, you're probably a Game Grump. Anyway, that's a different, uh, that's a different topic. And I'm not going to get into it because I'm rooted squarely, deeply in this phenomenon that I experienced that I'm trying to share here. There's a reason for this, by the way, because we have a theme on this podcast, not just household friendly, but we have a theme. The theme is not anecdotes, but to finish that one up and abridge it to what's happening right now, should we go over a bridge? Hmm. Maybe later. Let's transition from then to now. I've got breakfast in my belly. Yum, yum, yum. I got the snake bros blasting and talking about pyramids and ancient Egypt and stuff. I'm having a good old time. I'm slowly working my way through the backlog of those guys and a couple hours episodes apiece. Um, episode six, six, five, seven. I think it's six. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty good. So I thought I'm motivated. Not motivated enough to get in my car and do some work. But, ooh, maybe anecdotes are a theme. Sidebar. Sidebar anecdote. I found myself recently, repeatedly, getting busted in on during bowel movements in the bathroom. And also during urinations. And also during showers by two of my new housemates. They are cats. They're adorable. They are cute and cuddly. Maybe a little bit too much. We should probably take the shirt off at some point and get some rays. Okay. So anyway, these cute and cuddly housemates have busted in on me, relieving myself of my waste, of my bodily waste, for the last time, I thought to myself. I've got energy. I'm going to take the 10 minutes it'll take to take off and put on that faulty bathroom door that allows these cats to get in and watch me do my biological things. I'm a private guy. I'm happy to do some pets and cuddles, but one thing at a time, you know? One thing at a also, I don't want the door to be hanging open there after they bust in. Because I have other housemates that are of the human variety that do not need to see me in that condition. And if they did, I still wouldn't want to. I'm not an exhibitionist. I keep my matters of biological extirpation to myself. I'm not sure what extirpation means. I think I know what it is. So we're not going to spell it or define it. That's going to be your own homework. You can uh, you can comment in. 
and let me know what you find out on the old dusty trail. You know, the other one, the internet one. This one is the podcast trail. The run trail. The run cast. Internet thing. (laughs) I have now confused everybody and myself because we are three turns down a rabbit hole that I'm not sure anybody wants to follow me down any further. We've got cats and pooping. We've got cats and pooping going on right now, man. Anywho, I thought to myself, to complete the sidebar, I thought to myself, you know, I'm done with that. So I took the door off its hinges. Still listening to podcasts. Still having a good time. And wouldn't you know that it took me 20 minutes to come to the conclusion, after a pair of pliers and various stacked items of different kinds and levels and things had been brought into the equation and a stool and some pins come to find that the actual shape of the door because the door is very old it's very old that particular door is actually rounded on the top and the bottom and swollen in such a way that it is just not a good enough rectangle for me to align it in such a way that I can get the little doorknob bit to operate properly. I have to lift it. The only way to do that is to throw the brackets that hold it to the wall completely out of proportion. I thought I had it, but the tension on the doorknob thing was so high when I managed to throw the latch and get it closed and stay closed that I actually couldn't retract the metal bit to allow the door to open again because it was wedged so firmly into its little hole on the far side of the of the doorway i know i'm not making a great picture here but i hope you're taking keywords out of what i'm saying can't keep the door closed once i was able to keep the door closed the way the door is it wouldn't open again so i had to put everything back in its semi-broken form And wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know, and here's the kicker, here's the second part of the podcast. (sighs) Yeah, here's the second part. Here's a word for what happened to me when that happened. We're going to talk about it, but first we're going to get nice and honest with each other. I'm now going to remove my shirt and headset for a sec. Goodbye for a sec. Headset is back on. We are now wrapping the shirt up in our belt. I don't know who wants to see that. There we are. We still going? We still going? Hey, this is my thumb. Hopefully the lens knows the way up. Hey, can you see me? Okay. Now shirtless and honest under the summer sun. We can continue our little adventure. Let me wire those. Let me wire that through the digits really quick. Get this phone nice and secure. Ah, perfect. Okay. Here, let's get a left hand thumbs up too. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be all right. Now, what I experienced in that moment, what I experienced as my human designs were frustrated was exactly just that. I experienced an emotion. It is an old emotion. It's a familiar emotion. It's one that I understand very well. It understands me very well. The emotion is called frustration. You know what? It's a word that most of you already know. But just in case, just in case we need to take this baby back to mortar and pestle and basic bricks and Lincoln logs, which serves all of us as we move together with these things, these ideas let's spell her out frustration f r u s t r a t i o n frustration now frustration is a word that i overly use 
I don't need to use that term. There's better terms. Kind of like with sadness. Yeah, there's a famous Robin Williams bit out on the YouTubes from a movie he did called The Dead Poet Society, I think it was, where Robin Williams was talking about usage of words. He's like, hey, check it out. You can, when you're writing about somebody, and if, you, and if they're a certain kind of sadness, you can say they were very sad, or you can use the word, they were morose. You can do different kinds of things instead of just use very or not very or in a weird way. Because if I didn't know the word for frustration, how would I describe it using other words? It would be something like a weird kind of anger. How about that? How about that? Yeah, I think that works. I, th I can't think of a better way of, to talk about it, but there we are. We have the spelling, we have the definition, and as I'm still experiencing waves of this frustration while I'm talking to you, we're going over what led me to this point. This is important. This is important because most of the time, when I get really emotional around people, I tend to get emotional if I'm at home and everything is peaceful in a very happy way. But oftentimes, out there in the world, when I become emotional, it's because things aren't working that well. Remember when we talked about crossing the road? What are we doing? Are we jaywalking or is this still a parking lot? Remember back then? That was me negotiating terms with the universe and society, of course. That was me deciding to make decisions based on what I could control about my behavior based on also what I knew about what was going on. I know how roads work. I know how lights work. So I decided I'm going to meet this thing halfway. If I'm breaking the law, I'm very, very softly breaking the law. And there's no authority figures present. See, I checked. I'm not saying do either of those things. I'm saying be aware of your environment. Be aware of your environment. And act in your own best interest, but also in the best interests of everybody else. Me, I had a lesson to highlight. If I'd gotten in trouble and had missed something or gotten hit by a car, that would have been a heck of a lesson to have put up on the YouTubes. That is a real lesson lived by a real person who did a real thing and there were consequences. Just so happens that we got off free that time. So I'm providing you with a very, with a very nuanced version of choice making. And that's not something to get into too deeply on this podcast in a household friendly version of the podcast. That's more of something that I would rather converse about in real time with other adults. That would be something that it would be better to take that apart in the proper context. I'm not equipped to do it right now. Because breaking the law bad, kids, don't do it. Then later you can start talking to people about things. Just give it time. Do your thing. Go to school. Eat your lunch. Brush your teeth. Try not to go to detention too many times. That kind of thing. Whew, this is tricky. Trying to figure out how to how to do right by these different audiences at the same time, and also to do the thing that I want to do, which is communicate these strange experiences and lessons in real time. Well, let's keep going. How about that? We just got a little derailed because I became a little sensitive to me possibly putting out the wrong message. I hope I haven't done that. It's important to do the best that I can. So, I became frustrated when that door didn't do what I wanted it to do. Just like if there had been an authority figure present at the intersection earlier, and I would have had to wait another 30 seconds to cross the road. Even though I know that street, I know what traffic is like. I put my head on a swivel, I knew where every car was, or at least I was pretty sure. See, there's a difference. 
and then I proceeded to act on incomplete but pretty well founded and practiced levels of information, which is what most adults are doing most of the time. I'm not going to get into that. Y'all can have a family meeting about it if you want to sometime. I'm just inviting that space to open up. It's a complex world, and now's not the time to get too deep into that. We're trying to we're trying to fixate on something. There's a word that we can spell and deal with. Fixate. F-I-X-A-T-E. Fixate means to point your eyeballs at something and look at it really, really hard. You can do that with your mind's eye, too. And really focus. It's another word for focus. Just like frustration is a different and better word for funny anger. Sometimes you mean focus. And it can mean a lot of things. But sometimes you mean fixate. Which is a very still, vigilant kind of a focus. You can look it up in the dictionary. It's not exactly the same. As focus, they're different words. They do different things. Use them. And, if you can, practice using them. I'm with you in that. And if we make mistakes and use the wrong word, that's okay. Because it's just like back at the intersection. We're doing the best we can with what we have. I'm trying to move forward. Words are sometimes uh, tough to use right. So, when we can, we practice. That's why we're going over this. Fixate. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that door, that door got me. I was mad, and it wasn't just I was mad because it's a door, you know? It's not like the door meant me any harm. Doors don't mean harm. They only know how to open and close, and they only know how to do that when somebody pushes or pulls on them in the right way, sometimes with the right keys. That's all that doors know. If that, maybe doors don't know anything. That's not for me to say. I'm just a person. I look at a door. It seems to seems to do what I want it to do a lot of the time. But sometimes it don't. And then I don't have control. Just like if there was an authority figure at that intersection back there. Or if there were too many cars going too many different ways at once. And I would have had to wait. And I would have experienced maybe a percent, maybe one percent of the frustration in the intersection. That I felt earlier looking at that door, fixating at that door, fixating on that door. Well, you know, eventually we got to have to, we got to, got to have a day. We got to get out and do stuff, don't we? But look at me, now I'm all mad. And the reason why frustration is what we're talking about today is because I'm still in it. I don't know if this is true, but science, science, some people claim, and I don't know who claimed this or who seems to have proven it, but people claim that science says that human beings can only feel a particular emotion for up to 90 seconds before the emotion would naturally go away. If the person didn't make it happen again by thinking about it or by practicing thinking about it oh, and sometimes you don't even know that you've been practicing feeling all this frustration for all these years you just thought it was normal then you wake up one day you're like man the door didn't happen and it still opens and closes whenever it wants to especially when cats push on it and now I've got to do other things to poop alone. I tell you, I like pooping alone. Something secure and comforting and nice about knowing that if I want to poop alone, I can poop alone. That's a beautiful thing. You go into a public restroom with many stalls and many urinals, you don't get that. You don't get it. There's people grunting and shuffling and pooping all around you. People walking in and out having conversations listening to music or podcasts like this one while they're pooping. Maybe they're playing video games on their phones while they're doing it. And the video games are annoying. Maybe the people are annoying and they have weird, gross voices like this one. Eh! Eh! 
Hey, isn't this nice? Pooping is great. Maybe they'll even tell you about it. That's public restrooms. Private restrooms in the home. Now that's a little different. Or it should be different. A lot of things are in your control when you're in your house. But this time, for this last month or so, I know there's a chance one of those cats will be like, hey, I've got to say hi to mon frere. Mon frere is a French word. I think it means love or someone that you love or a fellow that you love. Mon frere. I can't remember. Might mean my love. I'm not sure. Anywho, I can tell you the cats love me. They love me dearly. But they don't have the boundaries that human beings have. And all that comes together. And after 90 seconds, I think about it again. And after 90 seconds, even though I'm not thinking about it, there's still a little bit of a bubble of a thought. And then sometimes that little bubble draws my fixation. It's there in the corner of my mind's eye. And I'm like, oh, that's right, I was angry a second ago in this particular frustrated way. This thing that I wanted didn't happen. That still sucks because it's still a problem. <laughs> Sometimes you can be frustrated even after you fix something. You know, the cats visited me when I was trying to fix the door. Suppose that I had fixed it. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you right now. I am so practiced at echoing all that frustration across many, many 90-second segments that here we are. It's been a while. It's been a while since I tried to do that. How long have I been running? It's like that plus 20 minutes. Gee whiz. An hour? So this thing that is totally healthy and fine to have 90 seconds of, I'm always making happen a lot longer just by thinking about it. Now, if this is stressing you out to hear me talk like this, bear with me or take breaks. Totally healthy and fine to take breaks. I get sensitive too. Sometimes I have to stop podcasts halfway because, or sometimes I stop talking to people halfway 